you are. The music when you hear the music <laughs> fade out. You're live. Good morning, and welcome to First Christian Church. We're glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Oh, is it on? There you go. Oh, <laughs> should I start again? Yeah. Yep. Good morning, and welcome to First Christian Church. We're glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. Things happening this week at the church. To Monday is Labor Day, so the church office will be closed. Board reports are due on Thursday, September 10th. Next Sunday, September 13th, worship at 10.15, but elders will be meeting at 9.15. Looking ahead, Tuesday, September 15th, is church board meets at 7 o'clock. Other notes for this week, if anybody hasn't heard, Kimberlyn had her baby on uh, the 3rd. Her name is Eliana. Also, other people this week, Tommy Wilhite just celebrated a birthday yesterday. No, Friday, I think it is. Um, also, birthdays this week, Maureen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maxine. <laughs> Stern has a birthday. Also, Roger Larson has a birthday on the 8th. Lori Johnson has a birthday on the 12th. And Rachel and Louis Camacho celebrated their anniversary yesterday. That's all the announcements I have. Will you join me in the call to worship? Where is Christ? Where or two or three or are gathered, gathered in Christ's Christ name. name. Christ, Christ is there and among them. So Christ is with us. Christ is with us indeed. Thanks be to God. Now join us in our hymn of praise, How Majestic Is Your Name. for being in worship with us today. I want to just thank you for adapting today as we face the rain and the winds that are coming and uh, for joining with us, whether you're online or in person today, we thank you and, and pray for God's blessings upon you. Uh, this time in our worship now is, is a time of um, remembrance, a time of lifting up, a time of intentional prayer. This is time is where we lift up those who are important to our, us here in the church, to the lives, uh, our lives here in the church, those names that are near and dear to us, we want to lift them up today. And we do so first by remembering our shut-ins, Anne Baldwin and Opal Dietz, Maureen Little and Carolyn Grimm, we want to lift them up today and pray for God's blessings to be upon them. We pray that God is with them, that God is strengthening them, and God is providing love and support to them in any way possible, and that through our prayers, they can feel the love and support that we have for them. We are also continuing to pray this week for Gene Stillman. Uh, Gene, who uh, had a hiking accident and broke 
uh, her back, uh, some sections of her back is, has been recovering and is uh, continuing to recover. We just received news that she will be um, being transferred uh, back here uh, to be with family. She's actually on the 15th going to be allowed to head back this way and she'll be staying in Rockford with her uh, daughter. Uh, so we want to pray for Jean during that travel period and pray that that goes as smoothly as possible. We also are praying for Bob Batley, who is alongside Jean during all of this and was uh, uh, with her. And, and we pray for his safe journey home as well, as he will probably also be heading back when Jean does. So we pray for Bob, whether they be driving or might be flying her out, whatever it may be, we pray for them during this time. We are continuing to pray for Sue Clark, who um, has had... Uh, good news right recently, some positive results from her tests from uh, the chemo that she's been undergoing. We are thankful for those results and pray for continued success in those treatments and continued uh, good news with her uh, tests and, and continue to pray for her spirit to be lifted up during this time of battling cancer. We're also praying for Woody King today. Woody, uh, who is Jay King's brother, has also had a resurgence of cancer and is uh, in, in treatments and is dealing with all of that. So we want to pray for Woody and, and pray that those treatments are working and that he can uh, have good results his, himself from follow-ups and that he is lifted up in spirit through God's love and, and given all the strength he needs to uh, face uh, this cancer and overcome it. We are continuing this week to pray for the Civets family and in whatever situation they are experiencing in their lives. We want to lift them up today and pray that uh, God is walking alongside them in their journey, and God is uh, providing them love and support through whatever life may be throwing at them right now. We pray again this week for Marilyn Stoll, who is Sue Stoll's sister-in-law, who uh, tested positive for COVID uh, after having surgery for a broken foot. So we want to pray for her and pray that uh, she is um, taken care of well during this time and is, is able to overcome COVID. Uh, easily and then can uh, focus on recovering her foot post-surgery. We are also praying again this week for Larry Harms. That's Debbie Harms' brother who is uh, dealing with some personal issues, some anxiety issues and things. So we want to pray for him and pray that uh, he is given all the love and support he needs during this time to uh, come out of whatever the situation is for him uh, uh, fully healthy and, and, and well. Today we also want to lift up the joy as it was announced this morning that Kimberlyn uh, was able to have her baby. It was uh, quite a long uh, labor process for her, but we are uh, grateful to hear of the great news of the birth of Eliana, her baby girl who looked beautiful and healthy. And, and I'm sure many of you who have Kimberlyn on Facebook have been able to see the, the wonderful pictures, but we want to lift her up today and, and pray for both of them to have uh, a lifelong happiness and joy together. As always, I'd ask that if you have prayers that you want us to receive, please reach out to us in any way possible. If you uh, want to give me a phone call, you can do so. You want to reach out over uh, Facebook Messenger or text message, call in the office, whatever works for you. We want to receive those uh, prayers so that we can add them to our list uh, and get, get your prayers lifted up. Uh, so just know that we are our lines are open and we are ready to receive those calls or those messages in any way you feel comfortable doing. Now, would you please join with me in the time of prayer? God, I give you praise today for adaptation, for worship that happens no matter what the situation may be, no matter what the world throws at us, Lord. We give you praise that we are able to worship today and gather as a community of faith. And God, I pray that each and every one of us who is gathered, whether it be in person, online, watching now or later, that we may be blessed by this worship and blessed by this shared time together. Lord, give us the strength that we need this day to face whatever obstacle that may be in front of us. And God, as we go forward from this day and move on into this week and in this month and in the rest of this year, may we be given the same strength. Lord, be that guide in our life and help us to always find a way through this world that we live. And God, today we have gathered to lift up to you these prayers of praise and these prayers of hope, of love, of all sorts of scenarios. Lord, we pray for 
these names in front of us today that are so near and dear to our hearts as a church and as people. And God, we pray that your love may shine upon them. God, be with our shut-ins today. May you lift them up in your care. Be with the friends and loved ones and caretakers and anyone who is providing them love and support and help them to feel our love as a church through these prayers. And God, be with those on our special request list today, those who are recovering from illnesses and surgery and, and accidents, those who are dealing with personal struggles. And God, we give you praise today for the birth of Kimberly's daughter, Eliana. May you be a light in their lives and, and, and shine your blessings upon them. And God, lastly, I just pray that you are with each and every one of us who is here today, who is in need of support and love. Lord, be with us in our prayers, prayers that some of us may be working out, prayers that may be a little too personal to share. Whatever it may be, Lord, may you work within our, our hearts and minds to help us figure out where we are to go, how we are to live, what, what we are to do in light of what we are facing. And Lord, just be that constant in a world of uncertainty. God, as we come together for worship and prayer, we come together lifting all of this up to you, praying it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's first lesson will be coming from Psalm chapter 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making a melody to him with a tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to blind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all the faithful ones. Praise the Lord. gospel reading this morning is coming out of the book of Matthew, that's chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen then to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, 
it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be, to, Thanks God. be to God. Today we're going to talk a little bit about conflict resolution. By definition, conflict resolution is a, a way for two or more parties to find a peaceful solution to a disagreement among them. The disagreement may be personal, financial, political, or emotional. And while it may not be the easiest thing to do, it can be one of the most important tasks into developing relationships and friendships with one another. You know, as children, we are taught to admit when we have done things we shouldn't have. You know, you shouldn't lie. And if you break the vase, you know, that was on the counter, you should fess up and say that you broke it. You shouldn't try to blame it on the dog. And when you're supposed to treat other people nice and how we want to be treated, we should be nice to each other and then we'll be receiving niceties back, right? That's, that's the normal way you teach our children. And yet, once we get to adults and we face the world that are full of all kinds of people, we seem to lose sight of some of those basic principles. Now, Jesus anticipated that within the community, this community that he's building up, and he anticipated, well, there's going to be conflict. That's inevitable. There he laid out these, therefore, he laid out these instructions that serve not only to demonstrate the ways in which you can reconcile with other people, but also to highlight the importance of doing so in the first place. Now, one of the reasons that this is increasingly hard for us to get along in this country is because we have idolized our individual liberties and freedoms to the point that they have become more important than our relationships with each other. For some of us, the flag has become more important than the cross. The church in the Western world has been influenced by this, this model, this model that really started with John Locke, who was a 17th century Enlightenment philosopher, who had this dominant understanding of the church as a group of individuals, of, of autonomous individuals, who come together under a common association. So when we take our emphasis on individualism, that is so strongly upheld in our church today, or in our country rather today, individualism, the, the individual rights that we have, and the idea that we're all free individuals who then come to a church on Sunday, we, we come into this idea that what Jesus is saying isn't necessarily just hard, but almost impossible. If we look at the church in this way, this becomes near impossible to do. So, so I think first and foremost, the first thing we have to do is to change this view of church and of how we relate to each other. Now, I personally like the way that Paul describes the church in 1 Corinthians. That's chapter 12, verse 12 to 26. I'm going to read that for you. He says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And the foot would say, because I, if the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. That would not make it any less part of the whole body. If the body were an eye, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, then where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, there would, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. 
and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may, may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. End of quotes. So if we take what Paul is describing here as this model for church, we see the necessity of conflict resolution. And when we view the church then as larger than just ourselves, larger than just those of us that have chosen to come and worship today, if we view the church as being more than just those who we have accepted into our membership, we can see how important our relationships to those around us becomes. Now, to say there is a division in our country would really be an understatement. It really wouldn't be uh, the full uh, scope of what we are facing in our country today. Not only has this country been controlled by the COVID-19 pandemic for most of this year, we have also seen across the past few months millions of people standing up for the rights of their neighbors, for the rights of their brothers and sisters. And we have also seen others rise up and try to take those movements and taint them with violence and discredit their validity, causing people on the other side to dig in and resist. But we have to remember that last line in this Corinthians passage where Paul says that the suffering of our brothers and sisters doesn't stop just because some people are choosing to do bad things. Paul says that when one member suffers, we all suffer. It's so important that we don't lose sight of that in relation to each other. When one person suffers, we all suffer. When one of our brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the pieces of the body, is suffering, we are suffering. It then becomes our responsibility to mend that suffering, to practice good conflict resolution, to figure out how to make that better. Now, of course, given these divisions that we see around us, it has become increasingly difficult to do that. But, you know, thank you, Jesus, that you, Jesus has given us a bit of an idea of how we can start that process. Jesus says the first thing you should do is you should approach this person in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And now you do that because in their time, <coughs> excuse me, it was inappropriate to humiliate someone in public. That, that wasn't something you did. Their honor was very important, so you wouldn't pull someone out in front of everyone and then and shame them. You would first try to work on things one-on-one, -on -one, and if that doesn't work, you then grab a few other people to come with you and try to help. Now, we have those roles built into our fabric as a church. We have elders and deacons, people who can serve as that mediating body between two parties. And while this is great talk and this is all good on paper, it only really matters if we put it to practice. Conflict resolution could not be more needed in our country right now. Many would have us believe, though, that we are, you are either against us or you are with us, that you are either a Trump-loving patriot who stands with the red, white, and blue, or a Biden-loving communist who hates America. And to that I say, BS. The true fight in our country, or really in this world, is love versus hate. Racism versus anti-racism. War versus peace. Good versus evil. Christ tells us that the church is not identified by a denomination or an institution or anything that we construct, but rather where two or more are gathered under Christ, that is the church. The things that the church are facing, the things that we are facing, these strong powers in the world are things that we have to face as one body. And to do this, we have to cast aside our love for individualism. We have to look past our differences and seek to reconcile ourselves to one another. Because it is only when the whole body works together 
that we can live fully for God. It is only when we bring all of God's children together that we can truly be one nation under God. So long as we allow this world to divide us, to make us angry at each other, to sow dissent in our discourse, we will only be allowing and causing a greater rift between God and the world. But when we view the church as a body, as God's children, as the pieces, and God as the head, we see the great responsibility we have in regards to our neighbors. Conflict resolution. It's messy work, but what we see through this passage is, is that Christ considers this to be some of the most important work as disciples. Because when we do this work at its fullest, we are lifting up each part of the body when it suffers, when it is oppressed, when it's marginalized. When we do this work the right way, we are showing love to our neighbors and treating them as we would be treated. When we do this work the right way, we are doing the work of God. And we do this knowing with confidence that the Christ who is sending us to do this work has also gone ahead of us and is guiding us through each and every day. We are not alone in this journey. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the loving support of our neighbors in Christ, we can do this life-giving, life-changing work. So join with me in pledging to do conflict resolution not by way of the world, but Christ's way. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in our next hymn, Lo, I Am With You. I want to invite everyone to join with us in this time here. This is a time that is set for each and every one who has gathered, whether you be a member of our church or any church, you are welcome at this moment. This is a time of remembrance, not only of Christ and, and the life that Christ lived, but of the death that Christ faced and the resurrection that followed. This joyous moment in our worship is set for us to Bind ourselves closer with Christ's call on our lives. It is when we take a time like this and take it seriously into our hearts that we are able to align ourselves with the ways in which we are called to live in the world. It is when we take this time seriously that we are able to go to God despite our shortcomings and say, God, I, I pray for your guidance in my life this day and every day forward. And it is because of Christ's life, death, and resurrection that God welcomes us with open arms each and every time we come to this table. And so we recall on the night that Jesus was betrayed as he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it saying, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took a cup and blessed it and said, drink for this is the new covenant in my blood. And for as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. We will now pray. Please join with me as we pray for the bread and for the cup.
God, I pray to you in this time that you may surround each of us with your spirits. Lift us up with your love and let us know that you are with us during this time and that these elements that we are about to partake in, Lord, are more than just mere bread and mere juice, but they are an extension of Christ's body and blood. God, allow these elements that we are about to partake in to not only nourish our bodies, but to nourish our spirits, to fill our hearts with your love to the point that we are drawn closer to you and drawn closer to your mission of the world. Lord, help us to live our lives as disciples this day and every day, lives for each other, lives free of selfishness and full of joy, love, and happiness and justice for all. Lord, be with us now and all. Amen. I invite you to please join with me now in the prayer taught to us by our Lord and Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The elements are before you. Please join with me now. Amen. I invite you to please join with us in our closing hymn, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. been a blessing to be in worship with you today to have this opportunity together and I pray that God may now be with you God may bless you keep you and preserve you God may lift you up this week and wherever you are and whatever you're doing and I pray that whatever you may face that you may find ways to practice Jesus's way of conflict resolution a practice that brings us all together under God amen Amen. Thank you, everyone online. And we will see you next week. I hope you all have a great day.